All right, this is Coach Half. Uh, sorry, I had to record this one this week. Couldn't go live. Uh, Going to have to uh, maybe work a little bit differently over the course of the next few uh, few weeks here. Uh, this is my last day here at Levitt. They're closing the building down. Uh, we, we do have a little studio that we've set up uh, down the road from here where we can do some things. Uh, and also I'll be working from home some, but I'm uh, going to record these on my iPad and, and then get them uploaded. I uh, wanted to talk to you a little bit today about uh, practice planning and uh, just to, to kind of preview ahead. Uh, tomorrow we're going to have Coach Russell from Norwich University on uh, for an interview. Uh, probably won't be live. I'm going to record the interview and, and do that, so hopefully that goes well. Uh, and then uh, same, I think it's going to be an interview uh, with myself and Coach Cooper, but it might be more of just a back and forth with uh, kind of he and I having a discussion about game planning. So maybe like I have some questions for him and he has some for me and, and we kind of go back and forth and I'm uh, going to record that and get it up there. Uh, Coach Capone, I think we're going to get into our Studio B as we're calling it, uh, to do a, a little presentation that we can film on uh, the recruiting process uh, next Monday. And then uh, next Tuesday, I'm going to do a, a session on uh, on quarterback play and uh, how we coach those guys up. So looking forward to these sessions. I hope you guys are enjoying them. Uh, I know it's just good to, to talk some football. It's keeping me sharp and uh, a little time away from the house to, to keep me sane is, is a good thing. So I wanted to talk today uh, about, uh, about practice planning. And I'm uh, going to go through the, the summer and how we do that. I'll just kind of talk about that. I don't have anything written down, but I'll go through the summer and then how we progress into the preseason and then how we progress into a typical week. Um, so the, let's, let's start right with the summer. Uh, when we come into the summer, usually the first couple weeks, I happen to coach both the football and the basketball teams. So we usually do nothing but basketball until about July 1st. So that last week that school's winding down, and that, that uh, late part of June, uh, the basketball kids and the kids who play Legion can kind of focus on uh, those sports. Um, you know, a, lot, a lot of Babe Ruth baseball kids as well. Uh, then once we get to about July 1st, in between the 1st and the 4th, we usually like to sneak in a 7-on-7 seven -seven practice or two. Where we just get the quarterbacks and receivers out, we install the route tree, uh, we go through all the routes, and then, you know, usually we'll, we'll play like a 20-minute a 7-on-7 seven seven game at the end um, with all of our guys out there and, and just kind of get them a few reps and get them used to 7-on-7. Seven our 7-on-7 seven. Uh, seven seven games usually start up right after the 4th. Um, so we, we have three nights that we run here at Levitt uh, where we bring teams in. Uh, we have a, a league going, and we get to play a bunch of games. Uh, that's a good time. Uh, you'll get a lot accomplished in terms of getting reps in your pass game and your pass coverages. Uh, also get a chance to look at your personnel a little bit and uh, you know see some things there. Uh, then uh, the main week camp is also the first week after uh, the fourth. Uh, Coach Lippert from Coney, myself, Coach Coop uh, from Bonnie Eagle, uh, Coach uh, Coach Spencer Carey played at Lawrence in Maine and is now an assistant coach at Bates. He's up there. Uh, a lot of the bait staff was out there last year, Coach Hall, Coach Patterson. Uh, Coach Hobbins has been coming up from uh, UNE, uh, a Chevrolet grad. Uh, he helps us out. Uh, Coach Scott comes down from Coney with, with Coach Lip. Uh, so we got a pretty good cast of characters there. Uh, every main college is usually there, or, or at least most of them, uh, throughout the week to kind of check things out. We have different speakers every day. Uh, this year we've added a lineman component to it. Uh, Coach Capone from Portland, uh, Coach Bach from here. At Levitt and uh, Coach Ledoux from Bonnie Eagle uh, are going to be running that. Uh, Coach Gray and Coach Twitchell, who coach with me here, are going to be helping out. Uh, their, their kids will be there, so they're going to uh, be a couple of extra hands there. Uh, so that looks to be a good time. Those, that's in the morning. Uh, the, the elite camp is uh, and kind of an all-day thing. Uh, we, we do our uh, kind of position work and group work in the morning. Uh, we have a speaker, and then we have lunch, and then uh, we do a film session. And then, or some sort of presentation, and then we come out and play seven on seven in the afternoon. So that's been pretty good. We have a lot of kids to go. Uh, that's been helpful. If you guys are out there, we encourage your kids to come. It's a great time, great chance to get out there with a lot of good talent and, and some other coaches and, and do some things. So, um, you know, I, it certainly is good for my own kid who hears my voice all the time to listen to Coach Coop and, and, and Coach Lip and have somebody else coach him up a little bit. So uh, that's been a good thing. And then, once we get to about that July 15 period, 
Um, you know, we try to sneak in a, a few practices. We try to hand out equipment usually is like the July 1st in that seven on seven area, we'll do that. Uh, and then when we get to July 15, we like to have a few, usually non-padded, maybe we go uppers once, uh, but three to four practices where we can get some extra seven on seven work in, um, but mostly so that we can install of our drills, install our drills on each side of the ball. Uh, so that way when we get to our camp the last week of the summer, and we have to do those, when we do those drills, we don't have to explain them. Uh, they're already explained in those kind of three to four practices that lead up to the camp. Uh, so, you know, by position, by the time the guys get to our camp at the end of the summer, hopefully if they've attended everything, uh, they know what the everyday drills are and, and the core drills that we're going to use uh, really throughout the season. Uh, then we have our camp the last week of summer. We call it the Hornet Pride Camp. It's every kid in our program from second grade to 12th grade. So all those guys are out there. Uh, the high school kids help out with the, the uh, grade school age kids. Uh, then they kind of go in and change up while the middle school's going. There's a little bit of an overlap. We've got to move some coaches around. Uh, if you want some specifics on that schedule, you can message me, and I, I can kind of show you what that looks like. Uh, and then the high school kids come out to finish the night. Usually a lot of the middle school kids and, and younger kids kind of stick around and watch practice a little bit. Uh, and then we play a little... You know, scrimmage, I guess you could call it, the green-white game. It's kind of a glorified seven-on-seven -seven RPO uh, uh, game that we play at the end of the week. And, and you know, uh, the kids get a chance to watch that who are in the camp. So that's kind of cool. Uh, it's a good week for us to get our base schemes installed. So if we've installed some drills in the three or four practices leading up to that camp, and then we get to install our base technique, uh, calls, alignments, and, and formation adjustments on defense, with a few coverages, that's pretty good. Uh, usually you're ahead of the game on coverages because you played seven on seven all summer. So that's usually you know, not, that, uh, not that difficult. Um, and then on offense, uh, we can start to install the top runs and the top play actions uh, that we've chosen from our, our menu of plays, as, as we've been calling it in these talks. Uh, then we get to doubles. And doubles can look a little different depending on... Uh, what that second week is. If that second week is a week that the kids are in school, then we treat that second week more like a regular week of practice where we just kind of get ready for whichever opponent we're going to play in the exhibition game. Uh, if it's a week where they don't have school, you know, then that has opened up, um, you know, really three extra practices for you. Uh, so those weeks are nice. Um, you know, you can get a little more installed. Uh, and we typically are, are, when we come out of those, are maybe a little ahead on special teams uh, from where we might normally be. Uh, but I'll, I'll cover the first week uh, and then kind of show you what a typical week works, uh, looks like once we get during, uh, into the season. So when we have double sessions in Maine, uh, it's Monday and Tuesday in helmets, Wednesday and Thursday in uppers, and then Friday in full, and then you can scrimmage on Saturday. You can practice Friday, Saturday, and scrimmage on Monday. I prefer the Saturday because I like the next week to be its own week. I don't like to scrimmage on Monday and play on Friday. Uh, so usually we just take care of the scrimmage Saturday. It's basically like your second padded practice. Coaches are on the field. It's a controlled scrimmage. Hopefully we're going to get Portland and Coach McLeod this year. Uh, be looking forward to that. Um, chance to butt heads with Coach Capone a little bit and uh, have, have some good laughs out there with those guys. Uh, so... In those first two, pra two days, those four practices, when you're just in helmets, to us, you know, th there's two things that really need to happen there. You know, one, we need to work on some conditioning, um, but you can't overdo it because you can't kill your guys' legs early in the week and have nothing left for the end. Um, and, and primarily, we have to use it for install. And our install plan is usually that we have almost everything that we want to have uh, the first week of the season installed in the first three days. So we look at our menu on both sides of the ball, you know, on offense, what are going to be our top runs, what are going to be our top play actions, what are going to be our top, you know, three and one step, what's our three by one game, what's our empty game, and we select the top things that we want to use. And then on defense, we do the same thing, you know, here's our base front, what are going to be the coverages that, that fit, you know, best for us. Uh, a lot of it is determined by who the first two opponents are. And we look ahead and kind of say, all right, who are the first two opponents? You know, what do we want to have in place when we get to that point uh, so that we're not coaching up something entirely new when we get there? Um, you know, what coverages are we going to need? What stunts and blitzes are we going to want? And then we really spend Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday 
uh, heavy, heavy on, on install and teaching. Um, to kind of look at it in terms of what we do in the morning and what we do in the evening, I've changed this up quite a bit over the years uh, on how we've done it. Some of it, honestly, is, it depends on what the availability of your coaches are because uh, sometimes it's easier to get them there at night than it is in the morning. Um, you know, our guys are, are relatively flexible, uh, so we, we've been okay here. Uh, but typically, we try to do our circuit work, our indie work, and a group install on each side of the ball, as well as some special teams indie um, in that morning practice. And then the evening practice is tailored more, tailored more towards group and team activities. So in the morning, we'll usually start with a stretch, and then we'll jump right into a circuit. So it, it could be a, a, a special team circuit. It could be a turnover circuit. Uh, it could be an agility circuit. Um, you know, it, it might be, it, you know, might be you just go to your, uh, you know, go to a position and, and maybe the focus that day is block destruction. Uh, so it's a, a, a circuit like that. Um, there's several, you know, whatever you can come up with, but we always have a little circuit period of stuff. Then we break into our position work. We do offense and defense both. Uh, if we started on offense, we break up by position, uh, quarterbacks, tailbacks, slots, Wideouts, tight ends, linemen, and usually we have a lot of linemen. Um, you know, or, or really too many for one guy to coach. So Coach Gray and Coach Bockler, Coach Twitchell kind of divide those guys up into two groups, and uh, Coach Twitchell and Coach Gray take the young guys, and, and Coach Bockler takes the older guys. Sometimes we throw Coach Twitchell with the tight ends, uh, whatever. But we break up, and, and you know, all of the the drill work and all the position work, all the technique stuff is built into that period. Our linemen would be doing their, their bag drills during that period once we get past the first two days. So they would be doing a lot of, uh, you know, how do I step when it's a reach block? How do I step, um, you know, when it's a combo block? And then driving bags. We drive bags for seven seconds because that's how long a typical play might last. Um, and they, they get a lot of that every morning. Uh, the defense period, we break up. Uh, we have, uh, we're a 3 4 team. We have uh, what we call our DNs, but really it would be outside backers in a 3 4. Our inside backers uh, are our DTs, and then uh, our safeties and corners. Sometimes the safeties and corners are together and then they split. Sometimes we can keep them separate. Uh, it really just depends on how many you have and how many coaches you have available. Uh, on the interior, uh, we either split it by young guys, old guys with the D linemen. Uh, or we split it by uh, tackles and nose tackles and kind of do that. So lucky to have a couple of pretty good uh, D-line coaches here, Coach Gray and Coach Bach and, and Coach Twitch. Uh, so that's what the morning looks like. We get to the evening. It's like I said, it's a group and team emphasis. Uh, we'll come out, uh, we'll get our stretch in, and, and I don't, you know, the stretch routine, another coach does that, and that's their gig, and they talk to the trainer and do that. But find a coach on your staff who's good at that stuff and wants to do it. Either that or just kick it to the bottom of the totem pole uh, to, to the guy who, who's been around the, the fewest years, and, and he's got to do it. Uh, but we'll stretch, and then we'll come out. We'll get on group offense. Uh, that's when our linemen will go down, and they'll work their combo blocks and their pass pro. Um, and then our uh, backs will get together. Uh, we'll work all of our run game stuff, so our jet sweep timing, all of our read plays, all of our RPOs, and then we'll get into... Uh, so seven on seven, where we'll use some of the pass plays that we install in the morning. So basically the concept is you install it in the morning in these periods, and then you rep it at night in these periods. Um, so, you know, whatever we're doing Monday here, when we get to the evening, we're doing Monday here. And then it's a different emphasis Tuesday, different one Wednesday, and then we start to review on Thursday and Friday and, and kind of put it all together. Um, so that, that's, a, that's a good period. Um, you know, good chance for, you know, when we do our seven-on-seven seven and our run period, we kind of split older guys, younger guys. And the freshman and straight JV guys go together, and then the varsity and, and the kind of JV guys who, who swing a little bit uh, and maybe play some varsity, some JV, or, or, you know, our backup varsity guys, they go together, and they're either doing the run game period together or they're playing seven-on-seven seven against each other. And we're trying to maximize the reps that we can get uh, we do quite a bit in terms of planning with depth charts, uh, who's going to be in, when we're going to sub, so we're not doing that on the fly and, and we're not really cheating anybody out of any reps. Uh, then we get to our team periods. Uh, we go with a team all. We have scripts. 
you know, all the things that we installed in the morning, all the things that we repped in group, uh, now they're scripted out. We're going to rep them in a team period, uh, mostly against bags that first week. Uh, you know, maybe Friday morning we go, you know, a little semi-live, uh, live block up front, usually Friday morning. Um, but installing against bags, and I talked about this in one of my other talks, you know, getting those guys on the, with the bags to move and run to the ball, even cheating and letting them know what the play is or giving them a call ahead of time, uh, we do that quite a bit so that our guys are used to, um, you know, the speed that it's going to be when you're playing against other varsity players. So uh, it's important you incorporate that. We always try to end with some two-minute drills so that every day in the preseason, you know, we've done, usually we do two. We go up and down the field once. Um, so it's, I think it's important that you do that. Uh, we'll also sometimes do that when we go Team D at the end. We'll either have a pursuit drill or we'll have the JV group do a two-minute drill against the, the varsity defense or Maybe it's the best 11 varsity guys out there. We take the next best 11 on offense and let them do a two-minute drill. So we always try to end Team D uh, with either a uh, pursuit drill or a two-minute drill. Uh, just to go back to our Group D install, Coach Bonnaby would be mad at me for glossing over the defense. That Group D install, uh, we have an inside run period and a seven-on-seven -seven period going at the same time. And we're fortunate enough to have enough players to do that, but we usually have to use everybody, the freshmen included. Um, so... In the Group D install, that's when we're installing the coverage that we want to use that night. Let me fix the lights here. Hopefully they come back on. There we go. Um, so, just check to make sure. Hopefully the volume on this is, is good. Um, so on the Group D, Group D install, you've got that seven on seven period going, you're installing all your coverages. Uh, down at the inside run period, those first couple days, we spent a lot of time on um, kind of moving the front, uh, stunts, blitzes, things like that, installing those uh, Monday and Tuesday. And then Wednesday and Thursday, we start to give them some reps uh, against some of the runs that we think we're going to see with those first two opponents during the year. We do not spend a lot of time preparing for our preseason opponents. Uh, usually we spend literally Friday night uh, preparing for the Saturday opponent because we're on the field for that controlled scrimmage. And then the next week we might prepare a little bit more for whoever we're going to play. Uh, probably like Wednesday and Thursday is fairly dedicated to them. Um, but we spend a lot of time looking at our first two opponents and, and what are we going to do against them. So that's what the Group D install period looks, looks like. Uh, then to go back here to the Team D period, during the Team D period, uh, we are trying to uh, get our, our formation adjustments down. Uh, so how are we going to line up to trips? How are we going to line up to empty? Uh, how are we going to line up to two by two? Uh, when a team goes under center, how are we going to line up to wing T? Uh, you know, we'll just throw new formations in the script all the time. And now we have all 11 guys on the field, so we're working on our pre-snap calls. And... You know, we have a lot of communication that takes place before the snap. Uh, you know, our, we want the safeties to talk to the corners and the outside backers. Uh, we want the inside backers to communicate with the interior linemen. The outside backers have to communicate with their tackle. Uh, there's several little calls that we use prior to each play that uh, kind of, that, that's them guys helping each other out to make sure that we're on the same page. So a lot of time in this Team D period spent on formation adjustments and communication. Um, I think those are, are really, really important. Uh, and then at the end, like I said, we'll do some pursuit drills or some two-minute drills um, to get those guys moving a little bit. Uh, and as the week goes on, you know, this becomes a, a little bit of a liver period uh, where now you're scripting it out, you're running some plays, and um, you know, you, you're kind of seeing what your guys can do. And then we do a special team every night. So uh, Monday, usually we install punt. Tuesday's punt return. Um, Wednesday's kick return, and then uh, Thursday's kickoff, and then Friday we try to hit up uh, field goal block, field goal, um, although we kind of mix in field goal throughout the week, um, but we, we kind of nail those down, hands team, onside kicks, uh, we kind of cover all that on, uh, on Friday. Um, so that's kind of how it, it plans out between the morning and the evening practices and the preseason. Uh, I'm going to switch over now and 
and kind of look at this in terms of the install. How do we install? Well, like I said before, we're going to spend a lot of time Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday on putting things in. And then when we get to Thursday, Friday, we're going to, you know, at least it, we call it getting, getting them off the page. So, you know, at, at Wednesday, we want to get everything off the page that we might want to use against our week one and two opponents. Uh, that's the idea. And then Thursday and Friday, we can kind of refine it, and maybe it's more geared towards what we're going to use in the scrimmage uh, or just the, the top plays that we really like. But at least Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday, we've gotten everything off the page. So like this year for us, um, we, we chose three run schemes a day. So on the first day, on Monday, we put in zone, power, and counter, work them against an odd front and an even front. So they're reviewing their rules against both. And when you get to your team period at night, uh, typically we'll do uh, an odd front script and then an even front script and work it that way. Um, Tuesday, we put in jet, stretch, and spy. Wednesday, we put in uh, GT counter, the GH counter, and the kick, which is the H back kick in the end, and the guard uh, up inside behind him. So those were kind of the nine plays that were at the top of our menu this past year. And those, you know, we put those in Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And it's not like it's the first time they've seen them. They've seen them in the summer. So it's not like we're teaching them things that they don't know. And, you know, we, we uh, even though we change our offense year to year with, with in terms of what we select off the menu, uh, a lot of the basics that are up here first are things that we run every year and everybody knows anyway. Uh, we do the same thing with our passes. On Monday, we're going to work all of our play actions and our slide protections. Uh, so that's the emphasis for the O-line. That's the emphasis for the guys in the backfield. Those are the pass plays we're using in 7-on-7. Seven seven. Those are the ones built into the team script. Tuesday, we, we went with our big-on-big big protection. Uh, worked all of our favorite one and three step combos out of two by two and three by one. Uh, so, you know, we're working uh, mesh, we're working four verts, uh, we're working our, our, our smash concept, curl slide, uh, you know, all of your, your basic ones that you like, you're using those and you're matching it up with the protection that you would use with it, for, which for us is big on big. Uh, then Wednesday, we get to our sprint game. Uh, we'll sprint the quarterback out, we're working on our sprint protection. We might talk a little bit about turn back protection. We also talk a little bit about Waggle Pro if we're going to use it when we get into the play action. Uh, but we're working our sprint protection with the lineman, introduce that, get that installed on Wednesday morning. And then uh, in the script, uh, most of our sprint out stuff is out of three by one. Sometimes we sprint to the trip side, but sometimes we sprint to the one side. Um, and then same thing in empty. We can kind of sprint out either way uh, and, and do that. Uh, so, you know, our empty pass game. We kind of install the rest of our three by one, the stuff that we like off rollout, a lot of the flood concepts, uh, or a lot of the rollout and ISO the backside receiver type of concepts with some, some drag concepts coming across the back. Uh, we, we marry those up with our sprint protection and work on that. Uh, then when we get to Thursday, it's basically just a, a review versus different looks. So we get to Thursday and we kind of script things out. And, you know, by the time you get to Thursday, now you're you know, these group O periods and group D in the morning aren't really install anymore. This is another chance to review. So we come in with a script of RPOs and reads for our run game during the group O install, as well as a seven on seven script that had a mix of everything. Uh, and then, you know, defensively we do the same. And then when we get up here in the evening, again, we, we'd wrap it again in group with those scripts. When we go to team and they, we'd see them in the team script. So, uh, Thursdays, you know, we have to kind of, you know, once we get to Wednesday, script out what Thursday is going to look like and, and kind of pare it down a little bit, but we've at least gotten everything off the page. And then we can spend Thursday in both practices really focusing on, you know, these are the, the plays that are working best for us right now with our personnel. Uh, then when we get to Friday night, it's usually the Saturday script. So the two Thursday practices and the Friday morning practice uh, will be a review versus different looks. We go semi-live on Friday. It's usually live block up front. And then Friday night, we're just out in helmets and t-shirts, and we're going over whatever our opponent's going to do on Saturday. They get a script on each side of the ball. Uh, we install some of those specialty teams like field goal block and some of that stuff, even though we're not going to use it in scrimmage. It's just a good night to walk through those and, and do that. Um, and, and then we're ready to go. And then the next week, we would get into kind of a regular week um, unless we had one of those summers where you, you gain the extra week uh, because you haven't started school yet. 
in that case, we, we plug in a few extra things into some morning practices. Uh, in terms of the defensive install, I just want to make sure you guys can see that on the, uh, on the camera. Oh, yeah, that's on there. In terms of the defensive install, um, it's kind of the same idea. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we're going to install. Thursdays, two practices, and Friday mornings, we're going to review versus different looks. And then Friday night, we're going to do a Saturday script for what we're going to see with our scrimmage opponent on Saturday. And week two, again, depending on you know what, what kind of week you're looking at, but we typically treat it like a typical week and you know prep up for our exhibition opponent. Uh, you know more so later in the week, but um, you know hopefully it, it pans out. Sometimes that your your exhibition opponent is similar to your week one opponent. Monday and Tuesday on defense, we spend a lot of time on our base alignment, uh, our calls, and our techniques. So we're three four team. Uh, we spend a ton of time with our interior linemen on their reads. Uh, we're a two-gap team. Uh, initially, uh, we will stunt some, and we will twist some and, and do some of that, but we want, ideally, to be able to sit in our base defense um, and then either, either play man or some sort of zone or combo behind it. Uh, but the, the more those guys can two-gap, the better off, and they can't unless they get a lot of reps. So, you know, our entire defensive indie period it's just those guys uh, working their their uh, their reads. So, and, and I'm hoping to get a, a future one of these where we can go over that and go over three, four uh, D line techniques with you guys. Be good to try to get Coach Twitch and Coach Gray in here. Um, so, you know, that would be a big emphasis for us in terms of the installs doing that. Our calls, again, I talked about before the the pre snap communication between the secondary and the linebackers, and between the linebackers and the interior linemen. Uh, that's really important to us. Uh, we spend a lot of time on it and put a lot of emphasis on it. Uh, we're fortunate enough to have quite a few coaches who are out on the field coaching their positions. And that, you know, getting lined up and making your pre-snap call is what allows you to play fast when the ball is snapped. So we spend a lot of time uh, emphasizing that and working that. And then similar to the defensive linemen, you know, your linebackers have reads. Uh, your defensive end have, have reads. Your safeties have reads. Your corners have reads. So our guys are spending all of their time in the Indian group periods, you know, working on those. And then when we get to the team periods where, you know, now it's, it's live and we're able to evaluate, is it, can this kid apply the things that they've learned uh, in an 11-on-11 situation? Uh, we also, in our, in our Group D install, will install... Um, Early in the week on Monday and Tuesday, you know, how, how do we pinch? How do we slant? Slant strong, slant weak, and how do we twist? So if we combo a nose and a DT, if we combo a DT and an outside backer, uh, how, does, how does that look? What's the technique? What's the call that we use? Uh, so when we're doing seven on seven with the DBs and we're installing our base coverages, then at the same time, there's a group on the other end of the field and they're installing these stunts. So I, I don't know if I mentioned this before, I, I think I did, but I'll, I'll rehash it. Uh, when we have our Group D period, typically it's a 25-minute period that's divided into two 12-minute segments. So the linebackers, both inside and outside, will switch halfway through that segment. So we might have the four starters and, and maybe a sub or two uh, up at 7-on-7, seven seven, and then the four backups and maybe a sub or two down at inside run, and then halfway through the period we switch them. Okay. Typically, I would say it's just the four starters and their four backups, because uh, you got to have enough guys to go against them. Uh, but you know, so so they're getting each in that period. They get twelve minutes of working on coverages. They get twelve minutes of working on stunts. The DBs are working on their coverages the whole time during those group periods. Um, you know, we typically start with we we got to be able to play man. There's a technique to that. We work on that in our indie period. We rep it in our group period. Uh, we play you know cover two and five, which is basically uh, you know, cover two zone, and then two man is the cover fives are our two man call. Um, so you know, how do we line up with that? You know, how does the, the what's the corners alignment? What's his technique? What's he what is he looking at? Um, and then we have a cover eight where we drop everybody and only rush three. Uh, so we get those four coverages off the page on Monday and Tuesday, but we really have gotten them off the page all summer in seven on seven. Uh, so our kids know those. You know, already. Also, uh, you're going to see some trips and empties. So, what are your trips and empty adjustments? 
We at least, you know, we have a couple that we use for each. Uh, it really depends on the week, um, but we get the, the one that we like the most, uh, we get that installed on Monday and Tuesday. We get to Wednesday and Thursday, then we start to get out of base a little bit and say, all right, how do we, how, when we want to shade the front, uh, when we want to, when we want to tighten the front and, and bring the tackles inside a little bit or eagle them all the way down on the guards, uh, how can we do that? Um, our linebacker blitzes and our safety blitzes, we start to incorporate that. Um, our combo coverages, maybe we're playing two on one side and eight on the other side or, um, you know, whatever it may be. Uh, you know, we, we get those off the page in those two days. And then in our inside run period now, instead of going over, um, you know, or as we go over some of this stuff, we start to add, uh, add this, the wing tee and the eye stuff. So early in the week on Monday and Tuesday in our team period, we typically uh, go against a spread offense. Uh, and then Wednesday and Thursday, we'll, we'll divvy the script and we'll still, because we face mostly spread teams, uh, you know, we'll, we'll have one script against the spread and then we'll have another script that might be, uh, you know, eight wing T plays and eight I plays or, or we might do just a wing T script one day and an I script the next day. Uh, but I think it's important, you know, there's always going to be some good wing T teams out there, Marshwood, Wells, uh, those teams that are going to be on your schedule uh, that, that are going to be good at that. We always make sure, regardless of, like this year, we didn't play a wing T team until we played Wells, which I believe was week five or six, maybe. I think it was week five. But we practiced against the wing T almost every single week. Uh, and we practiced against it almost every day, starting of Wednesday of the preseason. Uh, so even during the week when we were facing spread teams, we'd always have a, a, just a very small script of, you know, an inside run, let's see these six wing tee plays. Uh, you know, let's see belly trap and buck to each side. Uh, just so that they, when you get to that wing tee week, it, it's not new. Um, you know, the eye formation stuff, it, we don't spend as much time because we don't see a lot of it. Um, and, and, you know, basically if we see an eye team, we're, gonna, we're just going to jam the box anyway, so... Um, that's kind of what the, the defensive install looks like. Okay, so now I'm going to move over and, and kind of wrap up with uh, what does the typical week look like. Move it over here. And I think you guys can, can see that now. Uh, so once we get into the season for us, and again, we adjust week to week depending on what the needs are. Um, and we certainly change up the drills over the course of, of the week, and I hope to get into some of those position-specific things, uh, you know, tail end of next week. Uh, but Monday for us, typically the JD plays, so it's a, a group period uh, on each side of the ball. Uh, we'll take the, uh, you know, the backs and, and on offense and talk about, you know, what RPOs, what reads, what passes are we going to emphasize this week. Uh, well, we might rep them out. We usually do routes on air on Monday, too, where the quarterback just throws some routes to the, the receivers just so they can work on some timing stuff. Sometimes we'll go down and work red zone routes for a while or whatever. But uh, we, we take, you know, a good probably, you know, 25 minutes where we throw and then uh, just install some things with, with walk and talk. Uh, and we'll do the same thing on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, get over on the defensive side, take the secondary Coach Bonneby will talk with those guys about what coverages we're going to use this week, what formations they're going to see. Uh, the the uh, Coach Bach and Coach Twitch will take the linemen. Uh, his coach Gray's coaching the JV, and, and he'll take those guys and just talk about uh, the different blocking schemes they're going to see. And then we'll come together as a team and install all of our formation adjustments and our pre-snap calls, and then we'll rep them. So we'll have cards with all the formations that the team's going to use for the week, Pull them up, they come out, defense makes their calls, they adjust, they communicate, and we don't even run a play, really. We just formation adjustments, and then we condition. Uh, then Tuesday, uh, we usually go uppers. Uh, we have a defensive circuit to start every Tuesday. Uh, could usually some type of tackle turnover uh, circuit. The tackling is form tackling, uh, and, the, and we always mix in some turnover drills. Uh, and then after that, we switch over to offense. We go indie, group, and team. At the end of the team period or built into the team period, we'll punt. Uh, and then we have a team D period at the end uh, that basically is taking what we learned on Monday and now adding a play to it. So usually a 20-play script at the end of a Tuesday practice um, for the top 20 plays that we're going to see on the other side. Uh, then on Wednesday, it's our full padded practice. We do a special team circuit to start the day. 
The kickers are going to kick, the punters are going to punt, the snappers are going to snap, the return guys are going to catch, um, and then you know the field goal protection unit is going to be with the field goal kicker while they're doing that. They're working on their technique for that. And then we have a couple of special teams drills that we use. Uh, you know, we have a, a punt blocking drill that we use. Um, you know, I saw a, a good punt protection drill uh, that we're going to use uh, next year. Uh, and then we have a kick, kick return drill where we can emphasize one side or the other um, and work that a little bit. And we mix the return guys in there. It's, it's kind of like Coach talked about it the other day, Coach Capone, uh, basically doing your kick and kick return game in a very condensed area um, and, and typically with shields on, on one side, uh, whichever side you're not going to emphasize. Uh, then we go to our defense stuff. We do NED, Group D, Team D. We mix the punt returns into the Team D script and go over that. Um, and then we finish up with Team O. And typically after Tuesday, we've kind of gotten in the, in the lab, so to speak, and, and we've kind of figured out, all right, this looked good. This didn't. Let's scrap this. Let's keep this. And we come up with a real good script on Wednesday and really try to no huddle it and get as many reps as we can, um, you know, that, that are that are quality. Um, but certainly stop and, and coach it up when we need to, um, or just sub a guy, pull a guy out, coach it up. Uh, but we, we try to rip off quite a few plays in, on Wednesday in that Team O period at the end. Um, then on Thursday, uh, we go back to, uh, this year we were in uppers a lot. Sometimes we go shorts and t-shirts on Thursday. Uh, and sometimes we go uppers. Um, you know, it, I don't think it really matters a heck of a lot, to be honest. Um, but, you know, I, I think just the feel of the helmet and shoulder pads is, is, is good. So uh, we typically will go uppers, uh, but occasionally we'll, we'll back off and, and just go t-shirts. I think that's a week-to-week -week thing that you kind of feel out. Uh, we'll start uh, after our stretch with our special teams period, and we literally will just mow through every special team. Uh, we'll start ready to kick off. Kick return, um, you know, punt, punt return, hands team, onsides, field goal block, field goal, all that stuff. Then we'll go to a group O. It's usually a pretty quick one. Uh, we'll throw a little bit. Our freshmen play on Thursday, so they're doing their own thing. We usually have to swing a couple sophomores down with them as well. Um, uh, we'll get to our group period. Uh, we'll uh, usually that's not like an actual seven on seven that day. Usually that's a, a day where we maybe fix a few things that we need to fix from this Team O period on Wednesday. Uh, it, it's always in that Group O period, any gadget plays that we have uh, or anything that's just kind of special or, or unique or new, uh, we're gonna review it. Uh, it's just a, one last time to get together, for Coach to get together with the linemen and for me to get together with the backs and you know, kind of say, all right, this is the final game plan. This is what we're gonna emphasize. Here's a few things that may come up. Uh, here's maybe an adjustment that we might need after half, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, so, oh, looks like I'm getting a phone call. See you right back. All right. Wyatt, always needing something. Uh, so, after the group O period, we'll go to the team O period. Uh, we have a script. We go no huddle. Uh, we, we rip them off. We try to go up and down the field if, if we can. Our practice field isn't huge, so sometimes if the freshmen are home, it's not as possible. Uh, and we always get it, at least a couple more two-minute drills in on, uh, on Thursday. Uh, then we go to Group D. Uh, again, a chance for Coach Bond to get together with the secondary. Uh, it's usually, usually just a walk and talk period uh, where we, we fix some things from Wednesday uh, and just review the things we really want to emphasize. The inside run guys are doing the same down with the D lineman on the other end. And then we do a Team D. We have a script. Uh, we work on, you know, getting our uh, personnel groupings and things like that. It's usually broken up into base, nickel, and dime, and goal line. Um, and then we, we kind of have a little segment for each one, and we, we rep those up. So, and then uh, in terms of lifting, that's built into our schedule every week. Probably should have mentioned film in here as well. I'll end with that. Our varsity lifts Monday and Tuesday. Uh, we do not, we're not a big practice on Saturday team. Uh, sometimes we do, and sometimes we don't. Uh, it depends on a lot of factors. Uh, some of it depends on you know how how grueling the Friday night game was. Uh, maybe it was far away. Sometimes we have to travel a lot. Um, you know, maybe you have a longer week because you're playing Saturday coming up and you don't need to. Uh, but in the past few years, I've really been a big proponent of 
Uh, if we can give two ki uh, give kids two days off, uh, then we should. Uh, and if we can give our coaches two days off, then we should, because we're going to meet on on Sunday night. Um, so you know, we typically don't go on Saturday, but if we did, we would adjust this, and the varsity would lift Saturday, Monday. Uh, but if we don't practice Saturday, they go Monday, Tuesday. Uh, the JV goes uh, Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, and then the, the freshmen usually lift Friday, Monday. We like to get them in the weight room the day after they play or the first practice after they play to help, um, you know, just moving that blood in, in the muscle and working out some of the soreness and, and some of that stuff and uh, keeping it kind of as far away from their game uh, as, as they can. So that's a, a typical one for us, but week to week, you guys know, things come up. We do different things. Sometimes the varsity lift switches from Tuesday to Wednesday because we have meetings on Wednesdays at school. We have more time where the kids could be in the weight room because i got to be in a meeting. Uh, so we certainly adjust that, but that's basically what we do there. And then to end in our film study uh, for the week, uh, on Monday before we go out on the field, we would watch film. Uh, so typically we would watch uh, some, some things uh, of ourselves uh, for the game on Friday. And usually most of that time is spent on that. Like when we walk out to the practice field on Monday, we want last week's game put to bed. So typically Monday is watching Friday's game. Uh, you know, there are weeks where, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, we say, you know what, we don't need to watch the film. Or our coaches will send something to you guys on huddle that you can look at on your own with some notes on it. And we handle it that way. Uh, it's kind of a week-to-week -week thing. But I would say in general, in most cases, we watch ourselves on Monday and, and correct some things. Uh, Tuesday, because it's an offensive emphasis, we'll watch the other team on defense uh, and spend a lot of time with that. And Coach Bonnaby will send the defense guys uh, some sort of uh, you know package usually of plays for them to review kind of headed into Wednesday. But then Wednesday, uh, we would meet after school and get in a good uh, film session of the other team's offense. And then Thursday, we would come in, we would watch the other team on special teams uh, to make sure that, that we're aware with everything they would do there. And then we uh, usually at that point, uh, Coach Bonnaby has some folders of, uh, that are done by formation. And we would kind of go through a formation review of each formation they're going to use and, and what our adjustment may be if there is one. Uh, and offensively, that might be a time we might cover, like, this is what their nickel look is, or this is what their goal line look is, or or something like that, because those specialty looks are going to kind of be in those two scripts on Thursday. Uh, so that's what our film looks like for the week. So thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Uh, I'll get this uploaded and, and get it out there. And uh, like I said, tomorrow, hopefully the technology works out, and I'll have uh, Coach Russell from uh, Norwich U for you guys. So peace out.